And now, story time with the Brick Miser. Hello, children. Are we all sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. <clears throat> and we'll start by shrugging off that incredibly fake English accent. I mean, I I'm Midwestern. Why would I have a British accent? So, yeah, today I am looking at a Lego book. And today's Lego book is... Lego Ninjago Brickmaster. Make 15 exclusive Lego models. And as you can see, it is perfectly brand new, still sealed. Well, except for that part back there where it kind of got ruined in shipping. But eh, what are you, you going to do? Um, so, Ninjago, I have not seen the TV show this is based on. I've actually read a couple of the comics. They're okay. Maybe I'll talk, talk more about them in the future. But for now, we're going to open up this book and see what's inside. See just what kind of story it even is. Um, let's see, what can we, what can we critique about with the cover? So, it's Lego, of course, but it's also been, let's see, I saw, I saw the, there it is. It's been published by DK, which, um, also publishes those eyewitness books and just all those different educational encyclopedia type things. Um, great value, includes Lego Ninjago video game inside. Oh, well, now this has all been worth it. Um, it includes more than 140 bricks and two minifigures. I will be counting those, so you better be true to your word. Uh, da -da -da. There's the zero to three. However, it says six plus. Anyone between those ages is unfortunately sent back in time to the age of the dinosaurs and sent forward in time to the Revolutionary War. Probably back in time after that. I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Uh, da -da -da. Create your own Lego Ninjago adventures with this amazing set containing bricks, minifigures, and an instruction book. There are five sets of models to build in turn. And let's see, we can build a sword of fire and a skeleton mission. Is that anything like a Jesuit mission? Um, a spinjitsu shrine. Spinjitsu. 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 Oh, geez, say that three times fast. I can't even say it once. Uh, ninja attack. Well, that's well, that's what a ninja does usually. And focus. Battle for Ninja Go. So, is this just an entire world populated by ninjas? I mean, I, I have a very hard time believing that such a world could actually be sustainable, in my opinion. But whatever, it's Lego. What is there to complain about? Well, actually, there's a lot to complain about, but we won't complain about it now. Let's see. Da -da -da. 30 bucks. I actually spent only 10 bucks for this. They were having a huge sale over at a store, so lucky me. Da -da -da. Let's see. And we saw that, so okay, enough tap dancing around. Let's open her up and see what we're in for. And now that the sticker's gone, then we can see the cover. So, hmm. Yeah, it's basically just the models that we saw in the back. There's a skeleton with a, uh, hmm. Looks like he's had a bit of a uh, brain surgery there. In fact, actually, wouldn't technically a, a skeleton still have a brain? I mean, the brain's still encased in the skull. So even if everything else drained away, wouldn't he technically have mush at the very least i don't know i have never taken biology so and there's i know that character like i said i read a few ninja go books but i don't remember his name right now so ah well let's just open it. this is the book this is just i was expecting at least twice this size this is it Good gravy. This is probably going to be a short episode. Well, I say that, but we have no idea how long it's going to take to put these things together. Okay, there's all the pieces, so join me in counting them one by one. One, two, three, skip a few, 140. At least I'm assuming. All right, let's open, let's open this thing up, see what's inside here. How do we open it? How do we, uh, oh, this slides out. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let's see. Oh, 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 wow. It, it actually comes in a case. I was expecting it to come in like a little plastic bag, but it, it's a sealed case, a perfectly legitimate. Oh, man. I, I might just have to eBay this. This is pristine. Oh, man. Okay, put that aside. We're not talking about that today. Oh, I tore it already. Oh, well. Let's see. 
And there's the bag full of stuff. Anything else? Any more bags? Um, no, that's... This is 140 pieces, really? I Really tiny pieces there. Um, okay, let's just slide that back in. If we can, without tearing it even more. Uh, come on, this is really going to upset the reading if I can't... Uh, jump cut. Okay, I have defeated the evil box of evilness. I don't think I did it right, but really, who cares? I'm never opening that again, so... Okay, what do we got here? <clears throat> okay, his name is Kai. Kai? K? Kai? I don't know. Um, Kai is the ninja of fire, a brave ninja warrior. So all the other ninjas aren't then. He is part of a team that, perfect, that protects the world of Ninjago from the Skeleton Army. Hmm. I thought that was Ash's job, but eh, whatever. Probably off catching Pokemon. Oh, different Ash. Sorry. Uh, Kai is skilled in the ancient art of Spinjitsu, a deadly fighting style. Hmm. Yeah, whatever suits you. When, when he is not guarding the Sacred Sword of Fire, Kai enjoys listening to music. He is also pretty good at breakdancing. Hmm. So we're building a breakdancing ninja, huh? Oh, is that like the uh, ninja dancing warrior, I think it's called, from Linkara's show? I don't know. Whatever. And who's this other guy? Frackjaw. Frackjaw? Prackjaw? Fra it's the font. The font's weird. And I bumped the microphone. Good for me. Um, yeah, I think it says Frackjaw. Oh, yeah, it says right here. Finally, it clears, so. Frackjaw is a soldier from the Skeleton Army. Well, that's pretty obvious. Uh, he is known as the Skeleton of Fire, and he has no mercy. Oh, that's too bad. He is hot to the touch. Hmm, kind of false advertising there. Um, and burns with such rage that he leaves a trail of ashes behind him. Oh, man, it's cleaning bills must be so sky high here. Uh, Frackjaw longs to possess the Sword of Fire almost as much as he loves ro roasted... <laughs> okay, you have just destroyed any badassery that you were trying to set up there. Okay, um... Let's see, so I've actually never... Why is this side blank? Is it... Um, let's see, what are we doing with this book anyway? I've never... It looks like it's all just instruction pieces, so... Hmm. All right, we'll just start with page one and see where we go from there. There, I finally said it right. Okay. Ninja Go is in danger. Ah, really? Uh, Kai is guarding the legendary Sword of Fire. Yeah, that's what you said on the last page. Um, cooperate, please. Uh, it is one of the sacred weapons of Spinjitsu. I thought ninjas didn't usually use weapons. I mean, it... No, no, okay, no. Sword of Fire, that's a samurai thing, I believe. It's uh, ninjas, they use their hands and their feet and those little throwing stars, maybe a dagger or something. Um, at least that's what I understand. Maybe I'm wrong, I've never been to Asia. I am so, <clears throat> I am an uncultured Middle Western guy on the internet, so who knows. Um, anyway, if it falls into the wrong hands, the world could be destroyed. What happens if it falls into the right hands, then? Will the world be... be Renewed? Be rejuvenated? Re whatever. Uh, suddenly, Frackjaw zooms out of his skull cave on a mission to steal the golden weapon. Okay, so he has the weapon then? That, that's gold? I thought it was yellow. Whatever. Um, who will triumph? Well, I'm guessing it's the ninja because that's usually how these things go. So, wait. What? It's a skeleton and he's a... That's something really weird about this world. It's It takes place in ninjas and sorcery and monsters, but they have mechanical, modern-day, big weapons of mass destruction and cars. It's, how do they even find the resources? Do they, I, I, no, I'm completely lost. I don't even have a joke for that. Okay. Eh, looks like we get to start building here. Doom buggy. Eh, that's a doom buggy, apparently. Frackjaw's doom buggy is so fast! How fast is it? It roars over rocks and zips through trees on its four sturdy wheels. If Frackjaw drives fast enough, the Doom Buggy can speed straight into the underworld. With the red skeleton emblem on its bonnet, 
The Doom Buggy ins inspires fear in all who see it. Um, yeah, Bonnet doesn't usually inspire fear, as far as I know. Did you know the Skeleton Army is from the Underworld, a terrifying place beneath the world of Ninjago? That is usually where the Underworld is located, so... And I bumped the mic again, so... Let's see, these are just pages to build the mini figs, huh? Skeleton mi wait, what? So there are several different pages, several different chapters. Hmm. I I really wasn't expecting this. Now I gotta reevaluate my strategy, see what I have to do here. So, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to read through this and I am going to build the models and I'm going to read what I think is the most interesting so that I don't take up all your time. Ready, here we go. And here we have Frack Jaws Doom Buggy. And eh, for a little mini set, it's actually not bad. I mean, the it's put together pretty well. It's uh, standard Lego quality, which after seeing all this crap Lego quality from knockoff figures, and hey, that's a welcome relief. Um, just one thing though, he has to stand on the buggy. Um, yeah, if something like this is as fast as you say, then I don't think that standing is a good idea, especially if you have an axe made of bone, which is also a, another very bad idea. I mean, okay, I, it would probably still do a bit of damage, but I'm pretty sure after you buried it in somebody's skull, then uh, the hilt would break off, and you probably want that, you know? Um... It actually has a little teeny steering wheel. Like, this is just so... Oh, this is like putting a caveman in a spaceship. Just there's something wrong here. But, all right, we already focused on this one. We already read about that. So, next. And here we have the Catapult of Flames. Again, not, not bad for a little micro model. And I like that they actually molded the pieces to make it look like a catapult. And what does it say here? It says... A catapult is a dangerous weapon. Fair enough. Um, it can be used to fling at anything at nearby enemies. Rocks, branches, and fire. Yeah, build one big enough for Michael Moore and you'll have a weapon of mass destruction right there. Um, and all incredible speeds. Da, 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 help Kai. Da, da, da. And down here, I am Frackjaw, Skeleton of Fire, and that sword is as good as mine. Yeah, I think that we already know that. I think that that's already been established a couple times. And right here it says, do not let a bl big black tumor grow on the earth with a face. All right, I won't. Next. And now here we have the Red Ninja Shrine. Yeah, it certainly looks like one, and again, simplistic, but okay. Um, one problem, though, I thought that these th that these things on the side, they fold. I thought they could fold back, though, but no, you have one that folds back, and then the other can't go anywhere, so really, what's the point? Yeah, if, if it's for compactability, then um, all you're doing is just making more space that needs to be taken up back there, so, and eh, whatever. Ah, eh, so pretty good. And the book says for this one, it's the Red Ninja Shrine. A shrine is a sacred place where ninjas go to meditate. There are many shrines throughout the world of Ninjago, probably because there are so many ninja on Ninjago, presumably. The Red Ninja Shrine is full of precious weapons. Yeah, still none of them actually relating to a ninja's profession, but then again, we got Skeletor riding around on a little jeep here, so I guess create creativity can play a part here. Um, the Sword of Fire is the most precious of all, and it holds pride of place. Pride of place? That is something I've never heard before. Help Kai build the shrine and guard the sword. Already done. Let's hope Frackjaw can't get in. Uh, yeah, I'm supposing that this is the sword here, and, you know, it's, uh, right here, right smack dab in the middle, absolutely nothing to defend it, it's kind of a pride of place, as you said, so I'm pretty sure anybody and their grandmother can just walk right in and steal the sword of whoop freaking do 
Oh, and by the way, d did you know a ninja is a warrior who carries out undercover missions? In Japan, ninja means skilled in the art of stealth. The more you know. And finally, the Skull Cave. And I, I honestly think I like this one the best. It's very well designed. It has moving parts, and um, yeah, it actually has a relatively creepy feel to it. You know, for a Lego mini. Um, so according to the book, it says, a Frack Jaws Spooky Skull Cave is built from rocks and bones." Well, I see the bones part, but for the rocks, yeah, that's um, that's debatable. This hideout is perfect for Frank Jaws' two favorite pastimes, keeping prisoners and roasting marshmallows. Covered and covered, I think. Yeah, it's probably a little hard to roast a marshmallow over that. Um, but Frack Jaw ha is one sneaky skeleton. He has a secret weapon on top of his cave. The rocky roof rotates and shoots skull missiles. And this is probably the best part of this. It actually has a rotating thing that shoots weapons. Unfortunately, there are these little flick missiles that I hate with a passion. All right. Well, I guess that I guess since we have everything here, the battle can begin. So, um, let's see. You get you go over here. You go right there. Here's the little catapult and the shrine, I think. And Kai. Kai is a little busy in here listening to Mega Death. So let's get him out and tell him to get his head in the game, shall we? Okay, let the battle begin! And it ended in a draw. Okay, so the thing about this book, um, I was kind of, and I was sort of afraid of this, but it's split into chapters. So we just did chapter one, basically. The um, the sword of fire is chapter one. Now for the next few chapters, that means that I have to take apart all the models that we've just done and complete a completely different uh, scenario. So, hmm. The next one is skeleton mission. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put together all the models for this next chapter, and then I'm going to re review the chapter and poorly act out what actually happens. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Part 2, Skeleton Mission. Frackjaw speeds through Ninjago, searching far and wide for the Golden Sword of Fire. Finally, he spots it. Hidden away in a shrine full of ancient weapons, Kai stands nearby, prepared to protect the sword at all costs. But Frackjaw is getting closer and closer, and he is ready to attack. And somehow not getting thrown off his supremely beefed up car as he stands up with an axe and yeah that's all I got um so yeah here we go with this one and I honestly like this one better than the last I don't know why I guess it's just it the piece the sets have more pieces to them so you can actually add a little more detail and it looks really good yeah even the sword over there is actually put in a more logical place you th Instead of being out in the open, it's, well, yeah, it's still out in the open, but you still have to fight through the, these spears and an axe and a sword and uh, Kai here with a, with a rotating flaming catapult. Okay, so apparently what has happened is that the previous scene was just a daily routine. And um, Frackjaw here was just speeding by. Kai noticed him, and apparently they didn't notice each other, thankfully. So Kai, in the meantime, went on and built this, while Frackjaw decided, screw this, and traded in his little doom buggy for this skeleton tank. And uh, now, yeah, he definitely has a pair. Absolutely. Finally found it. Well, let's see if the battle here goes any better. Let's see, Kai... Man, the catapult. Ba 
Virgil. Two direct hits. I'm sorry. Yep, the world is completely doomed now. Or is it? Let's tune in to chapter three. Incidentally, did you know that spinjitsu is an ancient martial art? Ninja who study it learn to move so fast that their actions create a tornado. Yes, it is the ancient art of spinjitsu dating all the way from 2011. Those were dark times, people. Spinjitsu Shrine. Look out! Frank Jaw has discovered the Spinjitsu Shrine! Again, Kai's well-guarded hiding place for the Sword of Fire, and he is burning with rage. Burn out the day, burn out the night. This angry skeleton soldier will do anything to lay his hands on the mystical golden weapon. But can he get past the obstacle challenge? Well, hmm, let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's see, you got two plants, a ninja that we've that we've already established as being very distracted, and this weird sword spinning thing, which unfortunately is just long enough to do this. Ouch! Yeah, I don't think any amount of ibuprofen is going to fix that pain, buddy. And it is guarded by fire, which I've just realized. I've just realized how absolutely stupid this all is. You have a ninja of fire fighting a skeleton of fire with a sword that creates fire, and you're guarding it with fire. I'm seeing nothing but stalemates with this situation, so... Anyway, and this is his car thing, which is not as fancy as the tank. I don't know why he decided to downgrade, but it's okay. A lot better than this freaking obstacle course. I mean, what did you have? Like two minutes to throw this all together and you couldn't even stand out of the way? You have to get a new butthole cleave for you? All right. And for some reason, he also, the skeleton guy also brought along a little weapons rack. I have no idea why he did. I think he's doing just fine with his car and his bone axe, but whatever. Let's see what happens in the next chapter. Ninja attack. When Frank Jaw locates the mystical shrine of sacred fire. Okay, this is like the fourth shrine that we've been to so far, and he's still found you. Yeah, I think that if he's found you after you've been chased to four different shrines, I think that's the time to analyze your friend's call history. Um, yeah, let's see. He locates the... Kai vows to use his ninja skills to defeat the evil skeleton once and for all. It's fighting fire with fire, and that always works out well. Uh, Frackjaw might have a terrifying cart of bones... Okay, I can be scared, I guess. Um, but Kai possesses the super speedy spinning power of spinjitsu. Charge! And in this set, we have another shrine, which is honestly the strangest one we've seen so far. Sorry about that. Uh, so it's just, it's like the shrine that we saw at the beginning, but it has two hinged portions. So first you have the catapult, which honestly fits quite nicely, and honestly it's kind of it's kind of a little more accessible. I like that. It's uh, it's on the end instead of at the center. And then the other hinge swings out to give you weapons. Okay, yeah, wouldn't the weapons make more sense going first on the thing, and then when all else fails, pull out the catapult? Or, actually, no, I can see that. We've seen how reliable the catapult is, so I applaud you. Yay. And there's the sword, and it's apparently resting comfortably, and we are good, I think. I don't know. I haven't read the next chapter yet. And then this is the Cart of Bones. I think it's very aptly... This lo this definitely looks like a go-kart. It definitely looks like something that should belong in Mario Kart or Sonic Racing or... Hmm. Honestly, it's the most creative design I think we've seen so far. It, it looks a lot like a monster truck thing. Or at least it would if it was a lot bigger. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Watch Frackjaw dig his own grave with a cart of bones! Also, free lemonade for anyone over 30.
and we have a flag as the logo instead of, well, an actual logo. That actually looks pretty... I, I want to race this thing. I need to go make another LEGO Racers game. I, mean, I think the last one they made was like in 1998 or something. No, actually, no, no, they didn't make them until 1999. So like 2000, 2001, something like that, I think. I do not know. I do not care either. And then we have this this fireplace thing, which the book tells us is the Shrine of Sacred Fire, which is famous because of these flames. Yeah, these flames. See, right here, you know, you, you, it's kind of hard to miss. Well, actually, hmm, how do they get the fire to burn all the way up there? Anyway, um, let's see, the Sacred Fire has been burning since the beginning of Ninja Go and must never go out for reasons that we will not explain because a mystery. Whatever. And then this kills me. It, it says right here, top tip, place the smallest Lego pieces together on a white piece of paper to make them easier to find and sort. And they are telling us this right at the end of the book. You know, I would think that this would be something to know before you even open the friggin' bag. But I digress. Um, so I don't know. I'm kind of have, kind of having mixed feelings about this particular building set. It's just Kai has been chased to yet another shrine. I guess he's just been listening to Linkin Park and to Aerosmith in order to notice the evil frack jaw skeleton guy coming at him at increasingly ludicrous speeds and vehicles. Yeah, whatever. If this guy's is that stupid, then I don't really know if I want to see the show anymore. I guess this wraps everything up because he safely placed the sword in the shrine and from what the book tells us, this is the safest place for it and it will forever be safe. Or will it? As we see in Battle for Ninjago. Oh no, Frackjaw has stolen the powerful Sword of Fire. Took him this long, huh? All of Ninjago faces destruction. The skeleton of fire builds himself a fearsome fighting machine to wield his new weapon. Can Kai harness the power of Spinjitsu to, to defeat his enemy and recover the Sacred Sword? Well, seeing as how this is the last chapter and there's no conclusion to this, nope, we're screwed. The model, on the other hand, is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, they just pulled out all the stops for this. You have articulation in the legs and in the arms, and you have a cool cockpit for the villain guy. Hey guys, look, Robo Boner. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. You have these missiles, which again are the shooting missiles, but whatever. And and you have a very a very detachable cockpit boner thing. Whatever. And, yeah, absolutely. This... Uh, okay, this isn't as cool as I thought because it falls apart at the merest touch. But the design is incredible. The design... You have swords here. You have flamethrowers here. You have... I have no idea why it has wheels, but, hey, they look cool. So that's all that matters. So yes, this is absolutely the design that is going to go on my shelf. And what does Kai get? He gets a little hidey hole place with a spear. And yeah, if, if all he has is a spear to defend himself from the evil giant mechanobot of doom here, then yeah, I think everyone's doomed. But hey, what a way to go. I mean, if, the, if their world becomes known for their evil robot overlords, then... Is that really too bad? I mean, you know, it's better than death by killer bees, so I think you're seeing the best of two evils here. And with that, we conclude story time with the Brick Miser. Or rather, the Brick Miser opens a book, finds that it's not actually a story, puts together a bunch of models, tries to ad-lib something while saying snippets from the book. And everybody probably clicked out after five minutes. Still, thank you for tuning in. If you like this, then maybe I'll do another in the future. If you didn't, I'll probably do another one in the future anyway.